does the constant barrage of videos of polar ice caps melting, polar bears starving to death, forest fires burning, the Anthropocene extinction, and all of the animal lives lost with it make you fear for your own mortality and grieve what we're doing to the planet? Well, my friends, you might have eco-anxiety. Eco-anxiety, or climate anxiety, was described by the American Psychological Association in 2017 as a chronic fear of environmental doom. The United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change said in 2018 that policymakers only have 12 years to avert the worst consequences of global warming. If this is something that you are struggling with, you are definitely not alone here. A million species are at risk from extinction, from climate change, overfishing and pollution. When you look at the rate of biodiversity that's being lost right now, it makes total sense that we fear for the destruction of our own planet and for our grandchildren's future, our great-grandchildren's future. Researchers say eco-fear is a completely normal response, even though it can be really profoundly disturbing. Professor Craig Chauquist says individual models of mental health are not designed to deal with the collective trauma on a planetary scale. Eco-anxiety isn't always a fear of a future environmental incident that's going to happen to you. It can be what you're experiencing right now. And due to environmental racism across the world, climate change impacts aren't felt the same by every community. We have to talk about the fact there are frontline communities dealing with the impacts of climate change right now. If you live in Flint, Michigan, or in one of the small indigenous communities worldwide that does not have safe access to drinking water, your level of anxiety associated with environmentalism is going to be completely different than someone worried about the future state of our planet. Whether you have already experienced changes due to climate change in your own environment or this is something that's in the distant future for you. The feelings of anxiety that come along with that is real. If you feel this, you are not alone. Scientists who witnessed the decline of Australia's Great Barrier Reef reported experiences of anxiety, hopelessness, and despair. While in some ways this feeling can definitely be mobilizing and help you contribute towards a greater cause, it can also be absolutely debilitating, overwhelming, and lead to absolute burnout. I've struggled with eco-anxiety and eco-grief since I started in this field, and it can truly be a debilitating and hopeless feeling. When the climate action strikes were happening in 2019, there really was this big sense of community and everyone taking action towards a common cause. We need to sustain that activism over the long term to make meaningful change. These overwhelming, debilitating feelings of eco-anxiety will overall have a negative impact on the cause if they mean that we cannot function due to being so overwhelmed with anxiety and pain. There are some really good steps that you can take if you are suffering with this. Some of the changes that I noticed really helped myself has been finding that sense of community. Community is so huge when it comes to global issues. Things like these climate strike movements or local activist groups can be hugely beneficial to your own mental health dealing with this. As always, finding those spots of nature that can be grounding, that could really help pull you out of the routine of staring at your phone, refreshing the news, and going out and experiencing the grounding power of nature is another huge benefit to having nature spaces around you or places that you can access when you are feeling overwhelmed. Everything that you are feeling is absolutely valid, important, and it's really vital to honor that, but it's just a matter of managing it effectively so that you can still continue to function. Here are some things to try if you are suffering from eco-anxiety. Was there a time that you saw another species, plant species, animal species, and you felt truly safe and protected in nature? Take those moments, let them help inspire you to work to save those same species, systems that inspired you in the first place. Practice being in nature, carve out a spot of your schedule to spend time in nature and enjoy it. 
be mindful in that time and notice how the nature changes. Maybe something's different every single time you're there. Use all your senses, ground yourself to the earth. Think about what you smell, think about what you see, think about what you taste. All of these grounding exercises in a natural setting can really help reduce some of the feelings of eco-anxiety. We are truly alive at one of the most important turning points of history. There is still time to make an immense amount of change and turn everything around. Embracing that potential and that possibility can create so much hope for people suffering with eco-anxiety. My name is Autumn Pelche. I'm 15 years old and I'm from Wukwumakong on Manitoulin Island. Have you suffered from eco-anxiety? Let me know what works for you and how you manage it. I thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you are interested in more videos like this, please let me know, comment down below, hit the subscribe button to help support my channel. And I will see you guys next time.